Over the past decade, international student enrollment in Canada has doubled. By the end of 2023, there were over 1 million international students in Canada, a country with a population of 40 million. And while 2024 saw the Government of Canada impose an international student cap, Canada remains an attractive destination for international students, set to welcome well over 350,000 international students in 2024. Learn Ahead is dedicated to supporting students through their online learning journey. But we also touch on topics like in-person learning, hybrid learning, and settlement. So in today's video, we are going to give ways that studying in Canada may be either painfully or pleasantly surprising when compared to studying in a student's home country. And since Ontario welcomes over 50% of international students, many of these differences will focus on Ontario, but many of these differences will apply to all parts of Canada. The first distinctive characteristic of post-secondary education in Canada is the difference between the college and the university system. In Canada, the terms college and university mean different things compared to other countries. Colleges in Canada focus on practical, career-oriented training and offer diplomas and certificates. Universities, on the other hand, emphasize academic and professional programs, providing undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate degrees. This distinction helps students choose their paths that align with their career goals. Unlike other countries, such as the US, where the terms college and university may be used interchangeably, for a more extensive analysis of of the differences between the college and university systems in Canada, please check out this video. Number two, the level of formality in student-teacher relationships. Professors often encourage students to call them by their first names and are approachable for casual conversations. For example, it's not completely uncommon in Canada for a university professor to invite their students out for a drink or a dinner after the final lesson of the semester. Now, there is always the option for students to approach their teachers with more formality, and a lot of professors are quite professional in their own right. But this can be different from the formal relationships in countries like Japan or South Korea, where there is a strong emphasis on hierarchy and respect. Also, keep in mind as we go through this list that in Canada, there are people from all over the world studying. There are also people from all over the world teaching. Canadian colleges and universities have a rich pool of talent from all over the world. So there may be teachers who come from places where the level of formality between teachers and students are a bit more formal, and they would carry that over when they teach in Canada. So this is on a case-by-case -case basis. Typically, your professor will tell you on the first day how they would like to be addressed. If they don't, feel free to reach out and ask. Distinctive feature number three, the casual dress code. Many first-year Canadian students, especially those living on campus, could be seen attending classes in their pajamas or sweatpants. Being crunched for time amid a busy schedule, some students will roll out of bed and be in their lecture within 20 minutes. So they may choose to skip doing their hair, makeup, or ironing their clothes before their next presentation. Similar to the level of formality of the teachers, the level of formality of the students could be reflected by what kind of program they are taking at the university, the level of certification. So while there is no clear dress code, unless if you require certain equipment, uh, such as if you're attending a lab, there is quite a wide range of ways that you could present yourself as a student in Canada. Number four, weather-related class cancellations. That's right, in Canada, severe weather conditions like snowstorms can lead to class cancellations, especially in more remote regions. This is something that international students, especially those from warmer climates, may find surprising. However, you may be relieved to know that you don't have to trek through the snow to attend your 9am class. It's essential to stay updated with campus alerts, especially during the winter. But in many parts of Canada, the weather is unpredictable and it could vary from hour to hour. So don't count on your exam being canceled. And if your class is canceled, this feeds into difference number five, the prevalence of online and hybrid classes. That's right, online and hybrid classes are quite common in Canadian education. And a lot of the time, if your class is canceled, you may have a makeup class via Zoom. Furthermore, many classes in Canada are online for the entire semester. This flexibility allows students to balance studies with part-time work or other commitments. 
On the other hand, some international students may wonder why they're paying the big bucks to study in Canada if they could just learn from home. Online education also makes it easier to record classes, meaning that students could pick up on things they may have missed from class if they're unable to attend. An alternative modality is hybrid learning or high flex learning. Hybrid learning combines online and in-person instruction. Students participate in both formats, often splitting their time between the physical classroom attendance and virtual learning. Typically with hybrid learning, the schedule is predetermined, whereas with high flex learning, the students will have the choice of whether they attend the class in person or online. However, don't count on all of your classes being offered online. While the COVID-19 pandemic led to a prevalence of virtual learning, there has been a bit of a pullback since the pandemic. Many professors and students alike prefer the on-campus experience. For that reason, a lot of courses are offered only on campus, and many programs such as nursing need to be offered in person because of their practical applications. Next on the list, co-op and internship opportunities. Many Canadian institutions integrate co-op programs and internships into their curriculum. This hands-on experience is invaluable and often leads to job offers after graduation. In comparison, such opportunities may not be as structured or widespread in other countries. With that being said, a lot of these internships are unpaid. However, they can help you to network and to get references from your internship supervisors. Next. Diverse student population. Of course, Canada boasts a highly diverse student population with students from all over the world. This multicultural environment enriches the learning experience and provides a global perspective. This can be seen particularly in places like Toronto and Vancouver, which attracts talent from all over the world. For this reason, there are many multilingual on-campus services for students. Moreover, Canadian universities are known for their strong emphasis on research. Students, even at the undergraduate level, often have opportunities to participate in cutting-edge research projects. However, there is often a substantial amount of money, planning, and red tape involved in conducting research in a Canadian institution. This may include finding a supervisor, drafting proposals, completing ethics analyses, and more. So unless if your undergraduate program has a research component incorporated into it, you may need to plan ahead if you wish to conduct research, particularly if you plan to continue your studies into the graduate level. Moving on, flexible course selection. Students in Canada have considerable flexibility in choosing their courses. It is not uncommon for students to take a couple elective courses to complete their degree. You can often mix and match subjects across different faculties. Many students have a major and a minor or a double major, so they have multiple foci in their studies. This interdisciplinary approach is less common in other places where students follow a more rigid curriculum. Number 10, work while studying. International students in Canada can work part-time during their studies and full-time during breaks. While there is a cap on the number of hours that they are allowed to work weekly, and this cap continues to change over time, this is a significant advantage for students who want to gain work experience and support themselves financially. In contrast, some countries have more restrictive policies on student work where they are not allowed to work at all. Next, pathways to permanent residency. Canada offers several pathways for international students to transition to permanent residency after graduation. Programs like the Post-Graduation Work Permit, the PGWP, make it easier for graduates to stay and work in Canada. This is more accessible compared to countries with more stringent immigration policies. However, with the recent international student cap in Canada, this too has changed, so make sure to do your research Moving on, health insurance for students. Most Canadian provinces provide health insurance for international students, either for free or at a nominal cost. This comprehensive coverage ensures students can focus on their studies without worrying about healthcare expenses. This level of healthcare support is not always available in other countries. Canada also has a free healthcare system, which may be different from the country an international student comes from. This can also affect the wait times and the quality of care that they get.
Smaller class sizes. Canadian universities often feature smaller class sizes, especially in higher level courses, such as graduate courses. This allows for more personalized attention and better interaction with professors. In contrast, some countries have large lecture halls only where individual student attention is limited. Many undergraduate classes will also include two components, a lecture component with more students, and then a seminar component, which is a little bit more intimate with less students. Occasionally, the seminar will even be led by a teacher assistant, whereas the lecture itself will be led by a full professor at the university. Community involvement. Community service and involvement are encouraged in Canadian education. And this relates to the previous point about internships and working in Canada in general. Many programs include community projects or volunteering as part of their curriculum. This focus on social responsibility can be less emphasized in other educational systems. But when you are applying for a job after graduating, a lot of Canadian employers do look at your volunteer experience and your volunteer experience experience may carry more weight in Canada than it would in other countries. Now that is not to say that volunteer experience would hold as much water as paid experience, but this may be a worthy consideration if you are faced with two options of pursuing a volunteer experience with something that is related to your future career or a paid occupation with something that is not related. Perceptions of degrees and employment opportunities. Canadian degrees are highly regarded globally, and graduates often find it easier to secure employment both within Canada and internationally. The country's emphasis on practical experience, like co-ops and internships, enhances employability. In comparison, graduates from other countries might need additional credentials or experience to be equally competitive. This actually comes to the core of what drives a lot of international students to study in Canada in the first place. They may be taking the same kind of program or degree that they have from their home country, but the certification from their home country is not transferable to other contexts, which is one of the reasons why they seek the more transferable credential from a Canadian institution. Plagiarism is taken very seriously in Canadian institutions. Academic dishonesty can result in severe penalties, including failing grade suspension or even expulsion from the institution. This strict stance ensures the integrity of academic work. In contrast, some countries might have more lenient approaches to plagiarism or no policies at all. In fact, in some countries, the ability to plagiarize or to cheat creatively could be seen as a skill and expected in certain contexts. However, this is largely looked down upon in Canada and much of the Western world. For a full introduction to academic integrity in post-secondary education, check out our course at Learn Ahead. Through video lectures, activities, and resources, we provide a full overview of academic integrity in the post-secondary education system. For students who would like to study in places like North America or Europe, this would definitely be useful. Check the link in the box below. Moving on, the importance of scheduling meetings. In Canada, it's important to schedule meetings with professors or academic advisors instead of just expecting drop-in meetings. It may be common in other contexts to just approach your teacher in the hall or at the beginning of class and start talking to them about your assignment. In Canada, it is mostly expected that you contact the professor beforehand that way you are ensuring that you are not interrupting the education of your fellow classmates and you are also giving the professor an opportunity to prepare for the meeting to ensure that they give you the highest level of support possible. Attendance and participation. Attendance and participation are crucial in Canadian classrooms. Professors often factor in participation when grading and regular attendance is expected. This might be different from countries where grades are primarily based on exams or final projects. However, there could be a difference between colleges and universities here. In many colleges in Ontario, for example, there are no direct grades given for attendance and participation. Although attending and participating in class will indirectly affect your grade because you will be more prepared, you will understand the instructions, and you might be given opportunities to earn bonus marks. 
So unless if it's otherwise stated in the syllabus, engaging in class discussions and activities is a significant part of the learning process in Canada. Canadian universities are known for their robust support systems for students requiring accommodations. Whether you have a physical disability, learning disability, or mental health concern, Canadian institutions are committed to providing the necessary resources and support. This includes accessibility services, tailored academic adjustments, and specialized support staff. For example, if you need more time to complete an exam, you may be able to seek an accommodation for extended times on tests. However, this is a two-way street. You as the student are expected to seek this accommodation, to obtain the necessary documentation, and to communicate this with your professor. If you obtain the accommodation to get a note taker for your lecture, you need to communicate this to your professor most of the time so that they know. In other situations, the accommodations department or center may directly communicate to the professor. Every institution is different, but compared to other countries where such services may be less comprehensive or harder to access, Canada ensures that all students have an equal opportunity to succeed. Moving on, emailing. In Canadian universities, email is the primary mode of communication between students and faculty. Professors expect students to use email for scheduling meetings, asking questions, and occasionally for submitting assignments. However, a lot of the time submitting assignments will be done through the LMS or the learning management system for that institution. We cover different LMSs in a separate video. So, unlike some countries where informal drop-ins or phone calls might be more common, Canadian institutions emphasize professionalism and written communication. It's crucial to regularly check your university email and respond promptly to maintain good communication with your professors and administrative staff. With this being said, a lot of your professors do need up to two business days to respond to an email. So don't be worried if you don't get an immediate response. And there you have it, folks. Those are 20 ways studying in Canada is unique and potentially different from other contexts. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. At Learn Ahead, we are committed to helping students like you navigate online learning. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to cover in future videos. Thanks for watching and happy learning.